offenses, nor the offenses of our forefathers, neither reward us according to our sins. Spare us, good Lord, spare thy people, whom thou hast redeemed with thy most precious blood and by thy mercy. Preserve us forever. Spare us, good Lord. Give to 
all nations unity, peace, and power, and to bestow freedom upon all peoples. We beseech thee to hear us, O Lord, that it may please thee to show thy pity upon all prisoners and captives, the homeless and the hungry, and all who are desolate and oppressed. We, we beseech thee to hear us, O Lord, that it may please thee to give and preserve to our use the bountiful fruits of the earth, so that in due time all may enjoy them. We beseech thee to hear us, O Lord, that it may please thee to inspire us in our several callings, to do the work which thou givest us to do with singleness of heart as thy servants, and for the common good. We beseech thee to hear us, O Lord, that it may please thee to preserve all who are in danger by reason of their labor or their travel. We beseech thee to hear us, O Lord, departed eternal life and peace, we beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee to grant that, in the fellowship of the ever blessed Virgin Mary, Saint George, and all the saints, we may attain to the heavenly kingdom, we beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, Son of God, we beseech thee to hear us. Son of God, we beseech thee to hear us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. O Christ, hear us. O Christ, hear us.
Increase in us the gifts of faith, hope, and charity, and that we may obtain what you promise. Make us love what you command. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. reading from the book of Revelation. After this I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all the tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, singing, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, who are these, robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And... The one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd and he will guide them to the springs of the water of life and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. This morning's psalm is Psalm 34. We will say it in unison. I will bless, bless the Lord at all times. His, His praise shall ever be in my mouth. I, I will, will glory in the Lord. Lord. Let, Let the humble hear and rejoice. Proclaim with me the greatness of the Lord. Let us exalt His name together. I sought the Lord, and He answered me, and delivered me on. Look upon him and be radiant, and let not your faces be ashamed. I called in my affliction, and the Lord heard me, and saved me from all my troubles. The angel of the Lord encompasses those who fear him, and he will deliver them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are they who trust in him. Fear the Lord, you, you are his saints. For those who fear him lack nothing. The young lions lack and suffer hunger. But those who seek the Lord lack nothing that is good. The Lord ransoms the life of his servants, and none will be punished who trust in him. A reading from 1 John. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, 
and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him. For we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you Lord, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. You know, over the course of the last two months, I have spent um, most of my time learning about the parish issues and also opportunities that I, I actually, all of us, need to be focusing on. And so what I have not been able to do is spend any time speaking on some of the issues that we're going through as a community and as a world. Now, I personally do not believe that politics belong in the pulpit. I really don't. But world issues do. And oftentimes, that line between the two don't just cross and they don't just blur. They actually intermix with each other. And they paint a living canvas, sometimes, oftentimes, of fear and rage and bloodshed. And in those times, people can't help but question the point of believing in God. Or at the very last, very least, questioning God's intentions. Whatever your opinion is, 
or lack thereof in opinion is on the COVID crisis, the racial divide, and our, our governmental divides and the divide amongst the people around our entire country. Whatever you think, the truth of the matter is that people are in pain, deep pain, all around. And it isn't just one situation, it certainly is not just one person, it's everything. People are reacting strongly. It's not such a bad thing all the time. We should be entering into what is going on around us. But they're reacting strongly to the multitude of unprecedented situations that are playing out in and around our everyday lives. Now my personal mantra is, in all situations actually, is to try very hard not to react, catch your breath, take a moment, and respond. Don't react, respond. And right now, people, all of us, are reacting. And I don't think we even realize how much minor transitions and developments of life in every day, in our normal lives, are compromising or affecting our ability to think, our ability to grow, our ability to embrace, our ability to respond, our ability to activate, our ability to rest in God. Now, every generation can point to critical tribulations of their times. Every single generation. Standing here, though, in the middle of this generation, there does seem to be a rapidness, a rapidness to the circumstances of our day. It feels like it, right? It feels like it. Possibly, possibly, it can even be enriched by and sometimes encouraged by present day social media. Leaders in every category are all adding to not only the rapidness, but the anxiety. Now, I'm sure that those who lived through the Industrial Revolution and even those who lived through the times of Jesus Christ can all point to the same thing and feel that things were happening quickly. They were. They always were. But this is our time. This is our day. And it's very real. All of it. It's very real. Now, clergy and those who are most closely associated to the church are not exempt from doubt or questioning or anxiety. We're not. We're truly not. Oftentimes, the loudest cries come from those who mediate the holies, as they should, by the way. And just as people in the times of Isaiah put forth these deep, deep, deep laments, begging God, begging God to come out of hiding, we, as a community of Christ, just put forth our own laments in the opening of our service today so beautifully chanted by Jackson, responded by the people who are here in this taping of this service today. And I pray within the own hearts of all of you at whatever time you are participating in this worship. We are here begging God to have mercy on us. We are begging God to hear us, to deliver us from all that is happening around us. Please do not think for one moment that the great litany, which is what we open the service with today, is merely a musical gesture of liturgy, for it is not. The litany, the crying out to God to come out of hiding and not only hear us, but respond to us. Respond to us. Hear, respond to the prayers that we put before you. 
At the conclusion of each one of those petitions, by the way, there is a little bit of a raising up. You probably heard that in Jackson's voice. It's a dipping down and a raising up is what it is. It's at the end of each one of the petitions. That slight little musical change signals for all of us, all of us, to raise up our hearts and our voices in the hope of God's response. If you want to hear it again, just go ahead and rewind or wait until after the sermon and go back to it and listen to it again. There's a reason it's called the Great Litany, because it is great. Canadian author George Lyles wrote that hope is faith holding out its hand in the dark. Hope is holding out its hand in the dark. And that is exactly what we're doing. I cannot think of a better perspective or definition of the times that we are in right now than that. Now, generally speaking, the Great Litany is um, it just normally it's done first Advent, first Lent. Um, we are offered that it can be chanted in any great time of crisis. And so I chose to include it today. Um, and the reason for that, on All Saints Day, by the way, um, is a time when we are here remembering those that we have loved dearly and have departed from us. But it's also a time, All Saints Day, for us to kind of sit with our own mortality and our own walk with God, which is really taking a look at our own sainthood within the construction of our own lives in the community in which we live in. So I thought that was a really good time for us to do that. Now, Advent itself is about four weeks away, and it's going to go fast. It will go rapid as well until we get to that four weeks. But Advent is more than a day. It's more than four weeks in which we celebrate it. It's more than a season. Advent, the definition of Advent itself is one who is expecting joy, but only the kind of joy that is called to arise up out of tribulation. That's Advent. Now I know it feels like Lent has never ended, especially since we went into the COVID crisis in March, in the middle of Lent time, in Lent season. But we really have been living for quite some time now in a season of Advent. And I believe that season is going to go on for a bit longer. Preacher, teacher, one of my absolute favorite theologians, Walter Brueggemann, his definition of Advent is this. The natural habitat of Advent is a community of hurt. It is the voice of those who know profound grief, yet who articulate it and do not cover over it. That's Advent. I know we normally think of it as Christmas, right? But that's Advent. Now here is where that situation kind of takes a turn, both for Advent but also for All Saints Sunday in any season that we're in. You always have to look for that turn, right? Here's what Walter Brueggemann continues to say. But this community of hurt knows where to speak its grief, toward whom to address their pain. That's what it is. Because the hurt expressed to the one, to the other, big O, by the way, the one, the other, in how we express that pain, and in whose place in this world is not in doubt. This community of hurt is profoundly a community of hope. It hopes passionately that trouble will end. Passionately. So living Advent, living into our own sainthood, 
moves between the two realities of hurt and hope. It lives into the context that one cannot live without the other. And it's important to understand that. This is a time to make contact with those deep places in our culture and in ourselves. It's too much to continue to ignore or displace or point as if it's somewhere else. Advent asserts that our current world definition of power and security is on the way out. And I am not talking about the election. I am speaking directly to and about those things in our own lives in which we give power to, in which we tell ourselves and believe we have security in. Living into Advent and sainthood puts the hard questions front and center, and it meets us precisely where our hurt and our hope converge. It asks us if we are bold and sharp enough to speak that hurt that belongs to us, to me, to you personally. It asks us if we are ready and open enough for newness to be given to us. And it asks us if we know who we belong to. It asks us if we know to whom do we confess. It asks us if we know to whom do we wait. Whom do we trust? That one, that one, that other is enough to relinquish all our other ways. The shock of the times that we are in is not just about destruction. The real challenge in all of this is liberation. Advent, sainthood, it all means the shattering of restrictive forms. It means the shattering of the shape of oppression. It means the shattering of the paralysis that keeps us from living half of what we are called to be in Jesus Christ. This shattering is both welcome and dreaded. It's avoided, which is what we're, a lot of us are doing right now. It's avoided, but it's so necessary. It's painful, and yet it truly does bring relief. I'm going to ask all of you as we go through and continue this day, this time that we're in, as we're heading into whatever comes tomorrow, I'm asking each and every one of us, including myself, by the way, to keep check of which emotion is most difficult and most fulfilling for you. If you find yourself shaking your head, affected by or lamenting over our current day circumstances, then be real about it. Be real about it. Be honest about it. Don't just gaze out point out and wonder how prejudice, oppression, and illness can be a part of this world? Gaze within and ask yourself honestly, why, how can prejudice, hatred, oppression be a part of me? Be a part of you. 
only through our own reflection and action can and will this world be changed. Because in doing those things, in entering into those things, we are allowing God to work in us and through us and be us. Let us pray. My dear Lord God, we thank you so very much for the invitation to always come before you. We recognize that prayers are not always answered in the way that we wish or expect or understand that they might be. Allow us to understand, though, in the midst of the process and the communication of prayer, that you are with us in each and every moment of the day. Amen. My friends, here and also at home, I ask you to stand, kneel, open up your own hearts as we offer ourselves in the faith of our tradition by reciting the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. My friends, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most, Most merciful, merciful God, God, we, we confess, confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and in deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all of your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. And may the peace of our Lord God be with each and every one of you. Also, also with you. Well done.
be with you. Also also with you. With you. Lift up your hearts. We we love the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right. right. It, is right. it is right in a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. <laughs>
And now, my friends, as Jesus taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast. Alleluia. For the wonderful grace and virtue declared in all of your saints, who have been the chosen vessels of your grace and the lights of the world in their generations, we pray for. Carmel Abela, Helen Abbott, Bill and Greta Bailey, Sonny and Doris Bendy, 
Ann Brezina, Randy Brewster, Ben and Kay Clark, Norma Corbett, Angelo DiLoretto, Barbara and Dick DeSanPatino, Linda Freeman, Jim and Inga Ganaway, Tom Hazelton, my friend Father Rusty Hesse, David Hasselhold, Angelo and Celia in City, Peter in Issel Jr., Albert and Derek Jensen, Harrion and Dorothy Jones, Tom King, Robert and Elizabeth King, Pat Klein, Charles D. Long, Jr., Al Medesca, Jimmy Mantell, Tom Metz, Joe and Randy Minton, J.W. Peters, Dr. Warren Phillips, Colleen and Lee Pittman, Charles and Jane Proud, Ron Red, Peggy Reed, Carl Sherry, Shirley Snyder, Norman S. Stewart Sr., Alan Striga, Alberta and Melvin G. Talley, Joe and Evelyn Walsmith, Dick Warden, Bill and Ann Young. May their light perpetually shine before us all. Amen. My friends, thank you for sharing this beautiful service with us. I hope it touched your heart in a way as well. No doubt there are people that you will be thinking of throughout this service. I encourage you to continue to hold them in your heart throughout the day. And as we move forward into the coming days, I ask that you continue with that same pliable heart as we look around to our left and to our right at the community around us as well opening our hearts to the grace and love that God has to give through each and every one of us. Just by happenstance this week, we are beginning a class in the flowing grace of God. And I ask if you have not signed up already, it's never too late to join us. Each and every week, we will be looking for those times and days when grace enters into our lives, most often unawares. The blessing of God, the Father, Jesus Christ, the Incarnate Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you all. Go in peace, my friends, to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God.